Hey guys, this is Lee, and in this video, I'm going to share with you eight things that they didn't teach you in beginner sailing lessons. I wasn't sailing when I was a little kid. I actually started sailing in my upper 20s. I'm now a little bit older than that. It's been a learning experience every single year. When I first started sailing, my town had a little community sailing program where they sailed sunfish. One year I said, you know what? I wanted to learn how to sail. And I had a 16 year old little girl teaching me sailing lessons, another beginner adult onto this 14 foot sunfish and we sailed around the Great South Bay. And that was the beginning of my sailing career. In that introductory lessons, we learned how to rig the boat, how to get on the water, how to sail on a straight line, how to tack and jive and come back. The most important thing I did learn from these lessons is that I really loved sailing and I got hooked. So after lessons and the summer was over, I found myself a sunfish and I started to sail. But as the years went by and the months went by and the races went by, I learned a lot of things that I didn't learn in those beginner lessons and I'm going to share with you in this video eight things that they didn't teach me in beginner sailing lessons. So the first thing I want to talk about is the weather. You really need to look at the weather forecast for the day and for the next few hours when you want to go sailing because if it could be beautiful one minute by the time you get on the water maybe half hour and then you're far away from land you might come into a squall or some rain or some lightning and that's really not a good thing when you're sailing with a big aluminum pole sticking out just acting like a lightning rod. Festivus is back! I'll get the pole out of the crawl space! <laughs> well, happy Festivus! So especially if you're a beginner or you're just starting out or if you don't like to sail in really heavy winds or tough conditions, you really have to take a look at the weather something that's good now might get too much out of your range and ability of sailing. It's okay to stretch your boundaries. You want to kind of be prepared of what's going to be happening in your next few hours of sailing. So to check the weather, you probably want to stay away from big general forecasts like it's going to be sunny today, it's going to be sunny tomorrow. Look at some of the weather apps that are out there, Sailflow, Windfinder. Windfinder is a decent app that I use, and a few of them are very specific to your location. So I'll link down a couple of the ones that I use and see if they work for you. And sometimes I'll combine certain areas together and make a forecast for my own use. And after a while, you can get really good at predicting the weather, at least for the next few hours and it could really make matters very pleasant for you. You could have a better time and in some severe cases really keep you out of trouble. He's in trouble. But even your forecasts and the forecasts on the news and on these weather apps are sometimes not accurate in the fact that a freak storm might come out or a freak squall might come out and hopefully you don't have to experience this. However, sometimes these things do happen and but the more you're prepared with the weather forecast, the least amount of trouble you can get yourself into. So how do you predict the weather? What apps do you use? Leave a comment down below. So if you haven't already, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. It helps us out a lot. And the second thing, that they don't teach you in beginner sailing lessons is anticipation. Anticipation. what i mean by anticipation is try to predict what could happen in the next few seconds few moments or even down the road keep an eye out on other boats other sailboats other motorboats especially motorboats in a busy area like where I sail in the Great South Bay, it's mostly motorboats and they do not really understand what a sailboat is doing. Now, when you're a beginner, they really don't understand where you're going because you're just trying to get around and just have fun. So you wanna to try to make your intentions clear so they can anticipate what you're trying to do. So anticipate that if you're going to get into an issue, whether the motorboat's coming close towards you at a few hundred yards or a few hundred meters, you wanna anticipate what can happen, where they're going. Also, if there's some obstacles around, maybe there's current, maybe there's a bulkhead, maybe there's a dock, docking or launching, you wanna anticipate what the wind and the current are gonna do 
to keep you out of trouble and to save yourself some embarrassing incidences. So number two is anticipation and anticipate other sailors, the weather, obstacles, and basically everything. So the number three thing that I want to point out to you that they usually do not tell you in beginner sailing lessons, specifically for the sunfish, is different tacks. And especially for the sunfish, the sunfish has a different feel on different tacks. What that means is when you are on starboard tack and the wind is coming over your starboard side and you're sitting on the starboard side going upwind especially, the sail you could trim differently or have to trim differently than if you are on port tack where the wind is coming over your left side, over the port side. And because the sunfish sail is on one side of the mast and not center lined, the starboard tack is sailed differently than the port tack. And specifically when you're going up wind, you could actually trim in the sail on the port side when you're sitting on the port side a lot harder than on the starboard side. If you're sitting on the starboard side and you trim it in to center line or as hard as you can, you're actually going to choke the boat or pinch the boat and it'll actually go slower or stall and you really can't go upwind. But on port tack, because of the angle of the sail in conjunction with the mast, you could trim pretty hard. Downwind especially, it's a lot more apparent that starboard, the sail is not hindered by the mast going dead downwind. So according to my friend Eduardo Cordero, eight time world champion, he always wanted to try to sail downwind on starboard tack more often than port tack if it was advantageous for him to do so as far as the angles going to where he wanted to go. Because the sail was actually fuller on starboard tack going downwind. On port tack, you have the mast, it'll kind of flatten your sail out so it could be argued that port tack is slower or it's definitely less full than starboard tack downwind. So number three is the tacks can sail differently on a sunfish. So if you're getting any value from this video, please smash that like button below and subscribe to the channel. Also hit that notification bell so when I come out with a new video, you will be informed. The fourth thing I wanna to talk to you about is education. I encourage everyone to continue to learn, whether it be watching YouTube videos, taking classes or clinics, joining a club, taking advanced lessons. I'll leave some links below and there's some racing classes and some cruising classes and you can get certified in certain things. So when you get to a bigger boat, if you want to, then you could have your certifications so you can take out catamarans and cruising boats and you could rent from some of the companies that rent out boats and so when they want to see your certifications you have them but it's always good to have this education because there's so much to learn about the sport of sailing and it's just the more you know it's easier to go out and have a great time oh my god he's flying <laughs> the fifth thing is racing a lot of times when you're just beginning you they might put you in a triangle to go from up down and around the jive mark, around the lured mark. But what they don't really tell you is racing really improves your sailing. I would encourage all people who are learning to sail to try to race, either race the sunfish or hop on someone else's boat if they invite you as crew, because you will learn so much more when you are forced to go to a certain place in as less time as possible. You will learn how to sail in close quarters with other boats and what to do when a boat is crossing you or you're trying to get the most out of your boat and the best way to do this is to have another boat right next to you or multiple boats right next to you and just sail and race for fun the good thing about racing in the sunfish is that it is an extremely friendly class the sunfish has been around since the 60s and been racing since then and they have always had the class reputation of being friendly, being fun, and also being competitive. Some of the top sailors have went to the Olympics 
and a lot of them have went professional also. Racing is not for everyone. However, if you try to race, you will definitely learn very quickly. When you get better at something, then it becomes more fun because you just know how to handle the boat a lot better. And a good resource, join the Sunfish Class Association, and I'll link down below on how you could join. If you've gotten any value from this video, I'd appreciate you if you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, it helps us out a lot. Thanks. When you're getting better at sailing, some of this is not just black and white. A lot of times you have to go with what feels good, what feels balanced. Your main sheet trim, rudder pressure, weight placement, even the pressure you feel under your legs. All of these combined should give the boat a balanced feel. You should not be fighting the boat. Another way you could use feel is you could feel the wind on your face, on your ears, and on the back of your neck. When you are rigging the boat and you're feeling on the left side and the right side face evenly, that's where the wind is coming from. That's where you should point your bow of the boat. So when you raise your sail, the sail stays above your boat and doesn't sail away or fall over. Number seven, upwind first. I usually say this to all the beginning sailors and people who are just wanting to go out for a fun sail, especially if it's a little bit windy. If you sail upwind first, it takes more effort physically. However, if you sail upwind first and you get tired, when to go home, you're going to go downwind and it's kind of less exhausting to go downwind. Also, worst comes to worst, if something breaks on your boat, you're going to drift downwind and you're gonna go drifting towards home. So I like to tell people to sail upwind if they're not going anywhere and they're just sailing in front of their club or their house or their beach, sail upwind first. A point that I wanna make that never gets mentioned in beginner classes is never stop sailing. The best way to get better at anything is to keep on doing it and sailing is no exception. The best thing is to have tiller time. The more you're on the water, the more you're sailing, the more you will get better. There's no way that you cannot get better. It's almost like driving. You can't just go and learn and then be the best driver out there. After a few years, you become a very experienced driver because you've seen everything and sailing is no different. One thing that they do not teach you in beginner sailing lessons is a philosophy. They teach you how to tack, jibe, how to rig your boat, However, I want to express to you that every single time you go out on the water, every single time you work on your boat, it is a part of sailing and you should enjoy every experience. The views, the people you meet, the feeling on your face, the feeling inside. These things are sometimes forgotten, especially by new sailors who are worried more about the mechanics of sailing and not enjoying their immediate experiences. So go out there and don't forget to remember to sail as much as you can, remember to enjoy the process, and remember to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. See you on the water.